let's talk about reaction mechanisms and let's define what a reaction mechanism is first. A reaction mechanism is the sequence of molecular events or elementary reaction steps, so two words for the same thing, that define the pathway from reactants to products. And so a reaction mechanism is actually what collides or what happens to make reactants turn into products. That's why they're called elementary reaction steps. And so in A, an elementary reaction step is a molecular event, a single step, an actual thing that happens. And you can relate coefficient to exponents in the rate law for elementary reaction steps. And that's different than when we've been doing rate laws from overall reactions, right? So we said that previously the rate law doesn't have to relate to the overall reaction and the coefficients in there. For reaction mechanisms, they do. Okay, and let's just revisit a couple more things. So an overall reaction describes the reaction stoichiometry, and this is something we've been doing from Gen Chem 1. And the sum of the elementary reaction steps has to add up to the overall reaction. So when we say it describes stoichiometry, what we mean is that we know how many reactants we start with, we know how many products we end with, and that is always that must be true. And what we'll see is that there can be one, two, or even more steps in the reaction, elementary reaction steps, but they must add up to the overall reaction. That's one of the rules about how to write a good reaction mechanism. And as it says in C, so when we hypothesize a reaction mechanism, and I mean hypothesize because we don't know what happens as far as atoms colliding, at least it's difficult for us to tell. That's why we're going to be hypothesizing. The rate law of the mechanism, the rate law of the mechanism must match the experimentally determined rate law. And the steps of the reaction mechanism must add up to the overall reaction. Those are how you, two things are how you can tell that you've hypothesized a good reaction mechanism. And uh, uh, one additional note, always show all species in reaction mechanism. So for example, you'd write uh, NO2 plus NO2 because those two NO2s uh, are going to be, uh, so molecules, I should say, are going to be actually colliding. That's what we're envisioning by a molecular event. Uh, so, and we'd write that in a reaction mechanism, whereas in a, an overall reaction, we would write 2NO2 gas if it was in the gas phase. Okay. Now, so let's uh, talk about, so in order to hypothesize a reaction mechanism, you have to have two things. You have to have the overall reaction and you have to have the rate law. And I apologize, my video here is covering up. See, there we go. Uh, there, the, this is, should say the experimental rate law. Is rate equals uh, the rate constant little k times the concentration of ozone, O3, to the first power. And the first thing we'll recognize is that, similar to our previous work, that the uh, first power in the experimentally determined rate law and the two coefficient don't match. So that's fine. Now, um, to hypothesize a reaction mechanism, um, we're going to write an elementary reaction step. And very shortly, We'll stop writing the word elementary. We'll just write step one. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write a what's called a unimolecular reaction step. And a unimolecular reaction step has uni one molecule, could be an atom too, I guess, but usually it's molecules as a reactant. So we're going to write O3 goes to O2 plus O. And 
What I'm saying is that for this step, you can write a rate law, and the rate law goes like this. Rate equals K times the concentration of the reactant, which is just uh, O3. And you'll notice that this is good because this uh, matches up with our experimentally determined rate law. So we'll talk more about that. Then uh, in step two, remember we want, and we won't be writing elementary here for very long. Uh, for step two, we're going to write a bimolecular reaction step. And as we're writing this, we're keeping a couple things in mind. So the reactants generally uh, that we write in our uh, reaction mechanism will be reactants in our overall reaction. The products, or at least some of them, will be products here. We've got this O here, and you can see that each step balances, meaning that we have O3 in step one, we have O2 plus O, that's three oxygens, so each step must balance itself. So, oh, so now for the next one, what I'm going to write is I'm going to write O3 and plus, oh, oh, right. So, and then that gives me my other reactant. That gives me my O, and my O as step one as a product does not show up in my overall reaction. So I'm going to have to have it be a reactant so I can get rid of it. And then O2 plus O2. And this one has, because each step has a rate, rate equals, uh, and we're going to call this one up here K1, this one K2. Uh, K2 times O3 times out. Because in elementary reaction steps, each of the reactants, it does show up in the rate law. That's what makes a reaction mechanism. All right. So let's add this up. We see that we've got an O that cancels on both sides. And let's take a note down here. Note. O is an intermediate. And an intermediate shows up first as a product, so it appears. Product. Um, and, but cancels out. of overall reaction. And another way of thinking about what an intermediate is, is an intermediate appears not in the very first part of step one, not in the very last step of whatever the last step of the reaction is. Uh, it only occurs in the intermediate parts of the reaction. Um, that's another way of looking at it. Now, uh, let's see. Oh, so let's add this up. Now we have O3 plus O3 goes to O2 plus O2 plus O2, which is our overall reaction. So that's good. We said that when you write the reaction mechanism, there are two things that you have to do. One, the steps have to add up to the overall reaction. And then the question is, um, uh, so oh, the other thing that has to happen is the rate for the rate law, sorry, for the reaction mechanism, has to measure the experimental. And uh, now let's talk about that. So this reaction mechanism has two rate laws, and we have to now decide how to pick one of them versus the other one. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to uh, assume that the first step is slow.
And we'll talk more about this. So I'm just going to write slow here. And we're going to write fast here. Because remember, this is a hypothesis. We are hypothesizing that the first step is slow because you can imagine that if the first step is slow, the first step, um, let's say the first step takes an hour and the second step, step takes two seconds. And then basically the rate of the reaction depends only on the rate of the first step. That's what the slow step means. And we'll see this. So now take the slow step. That is essentially the uh, rate determining step. That is the rate determining step. And so um, basically it's a way of saying we can ignore the rate of the step two because step one is essentially the rate of the reaction. And so this is a good reaction mechanism that we have hypothesized. It has the two things that we need. The steps add up to the overall reaction. And by making this assumption of the slow first step, we can say that the rate of the first, so the rate of the associated with the reaction mechanism matches the experimentally determined rate law. Okay. And again, we're going to talk more about this as we go. Um, oh, and a couple other things. This O reaction intermediates tend to be very short lived species, meaning that uh, as soon as this O is formed, as soon as this O right there is formed, it's going to react away um, because O tends to be highly unstable. Uh, reaction intermediates tend to be highly unstable, uh, high energy species, so they don't last very long. Um, this in the end would be a two-step process with step one being an, a unimolecular reaction. And what we can imagine uh, for ozone, and since ozone tends to exist in the upper atmosphere, uh, well, like there's two ways this could be a unimolecular reaction. So, um, or sort of ideas behind that. So O3 can just suddenly break apart. That's what this is saying, into O2 plus O. Uh, or more typically, uh, though we don't include this in our reaction mechanism, ozone will be hit by a wavelength of light. That wavelength of light will cause the ozone to occur. That can occur in the upper atmosphere. That's um, lots of uh, different wavelengths of light up there, including UV. Um, anyway, so a wavelength of light breaks the molecule into O2 and O. That should be smaller there, O2 plus O. And then the next molecule of ozone that the O atom uh, runs into uh, then reacts very quickly to make uh, O2 plus another O2. That's our interpretation of this hypothesized reaction mechanism. Uh, please go ahead and write a smiley face in the upper left-hand corner to make sure that you're listening to all parts of this. Now, so uh, here's another overall reaction, and this one has a rate that's uh, an experimental rate law. That's an experiment. Uh, rate equals K times NO2 squared. And for this one, we're going to uh, hypothesize a reaction mechanism that's one step, so always start simple. And the simplest reaction mechanism would be just step one. And it's going to be NO2 plus CO goes to NO plus CO2. So in this hypo hypothesized reaction mechanism, one molecule of NO2 and one molecule of CO are colliding and making the products. And if we do this, our rate law for this will be rate equals K times uh, NO2 times CO. Sorry, that's a little squinched there. But, um, and what we would say is, of the two things that we need this reaction mechanism to do, it does one of them, 
And the one of them is, even though it's only one step, if we look at this step, it, it is the overall reaction. So uh, overall reaction matches reaction mechanism. Check, but unfortunately, so the uh, reaction mechanism make rate law mechanism rate law does not match the experimentally determined rate law. So while this is a simple reaction mechanism, one step can't get much simpler than that, it is not a correct hypothesis. Um, so what we would say is this reaction does not proceed by an NO2 hitting a Cl because it does not match with the experiment. And in fact, what the experiment is telling us is that something else is going on and that we are going to need a two-step reaction mechanism for this. Um, good. There we go. And now uh, let's hypothesize. So this is the same example. We're going to have to get a two-step reaction mechanism. And that two-step reaction mechanism is going to start with step one. And uh, we're going to hypothesize a step one that does match the experimentally determined rate law. And so to do that, we just write NO2 plus NO2 goes to, okay, so now what do we write as our product? So we're definitely going to write one of our products So from step one that is also one of the products up there. And then we're going to write something else. And we're going to write whatever else we need to to balance this. I can see we've got four oxygens on the reactant side, so let's make sure we end up with four oxygens there. And we have two ends, so that is a good step one. And step one has a rate equal to, and we'll call this K1, call this K1, um, NO2, NO2. And I guess I could have written that squared, actually, but because um, even though you have to write the NO2 and the NO2 as separate species in the reaction mechanism, you could just write NO2 squared there. Uh, and like our trick before, we're going to say that this is a slow step because then we can use this rate law and make sure that it matches the rate law up here. Okay. And again, we're, so, and what we would say is that step one, one molecule of NO2 and one molecule of NO2 collide. Those are making NO plus NO3, and while NO is a product, NO3 had better be an intermediate. And we know an intermediate because it doesn't appear in the overall reaction. And it appears first as a product. That's the uh, hallmark uh, for the or the way that intermediates work. So that means in step two, we have to get rid of that NO3. So it has to be a reactant. We also have to add a CO because we've got our CO up here and we know that it has to match our overall reaction. This is going to be K2 because it's step two, and this is going to be fast. And then we know that for the reaction mechanism to be good, that it has to match the overall reaction, so we better make a CO2. And we have to make whatever is left over, which is an NO2 left over. And our rate for this, which we can write, is K2, lowercase k, equals concentration of NO3 times concentration of CO. And that has nothing to do with the rate 
the experimentally determined rate, but we can still write that up. Get up there. There we go. Okay. So, ah, a couple other things. Uh, let's go to our third color here. We can add this up. We can cancel out our NO3s. NO3 is an intermediate. We also have to cancel out something else. We also have to cancel out one of the NO2s. And then we can see that this does add up. So overall, NO2 plus CO goes to NO plus CO2. Good. That's one of the hallmarks of a good reaction mechanism that we've hypothesized. And we can pick out the rate for the slow step. Now, what NO2? So, note NO2, in addition to being a reactant, right, that we know, NO2, at least this NO2 that we're canceling out, NO2, this NO2 is a catalyst. Because a catalyst cancels out of overall reaction and appears first as a, as a reactant. So appears first as a reactant. And cancels out of overall reaction. And so we're going to be, have to be careful to keep our intermediates, which appear first as products and cancel out, and our catalysts, which appear first as reactants and cancel out, separate. And so this is a good reaction mechanism. It adds up to the overall reaction. And by assuming that the first step is slow, and we'll talk more about slow versus fast steps and what these mean in upcoming lecture videos. But so far, we know that we just, to write a good reaction mechanism, that we can assume that the first step is slow and that this is a good reaction mechanism.